And he said that single buildings are really sort of something of the past, which I also agree with him. Because you can't think of a building as an object, sort of that. You have to think of a building as part of a whole environment. So that where he didn't have much of an environment in the Bank of Canada, he created it with that extraordinary uh, guard, this guard, guard, guard in space, you know, that goes up all the 12 stories high. I mean, just absolutely amazing. In 1938, three years after the Bank of Canada opened for business, it had a new home in downtown Ottawa. Situated between Wellington and Spark Streets, and just a stone's throw from Parliament Hill, it was designed by Canadian architect Sumner Davenport and the architectural firm of Morani, Lawson, and Morris. The goal was simple, to convey a sense of timeless tradition and security, which is why, like other early 20th century bank buildings, its model was the Greek temple. The central bank's work grew rapidly along with Canada's economy. Within less than a decade, the need for more space was becoming clear. By 1967, expansion could be put off no longer. The question was, what shape would that expansion take? And whose vision should guide the project? Enter a rising star among Canadian architects of the time, Arthur Erickson. By the time Arthur Erickson arrived on the scene, the successor firm to the original bank architects, Morani, Ranthwaite, and Dick, were already at work on ideas for the new building. In a 2007 interview, Erickson recalled how the Bank of Canada governor at the time, Louis Rezminski, asked him to look at what was being proposed. Erickson did, and became concerned that the vision was too close in style to the original Bank of Canada structure. He told Rasminski, in his view, the new structure should complement, rather than copy, the existing building. And we got along very well, and I think he was asking me questions about what I would do. And I think I told him, not what I would do, but the things that I didn't like in the existing solution. So that's when we changed horses and we took on the overall design completely. And Morani, who had been the original architects, we had the continuity with the existing building and everything else. Arthur Erickson's vision for Canada's central bank comprised two 12-story glass towers set back to provide a symmetrical frame for the original building. The three buildings would be joined at four levels by pedestrian bridges. A temperature controlled the glass atrium would rise the full 12 stories and contain a tropical garden. Both the glass towers and enclosed garden were great innovations at the time. As well, the creation of a year-round tropical oasis also made some amends for the loss of a nearby park to development. I love working in the bank because of the garden atrium. Um, the, the light that comes in there, the greenery. Every time I go close to that space or into that space, I feel like it's a piece of outdoors. He said that there's a profound communion between building and site. And he always, always, always felt that. And he said there's no more poignant source of meaning in architecture than the act of setting a structure in its environment. Construction began in 1972 and continued until the end of the decade. The results were stunning. The project tastefully married the old with the new, respecting the past while presenting a modern, forward-looking face. In contrast to the granite building they spanned, the new reflecting glass towers and atrium conveyed a sense of openness and transparency. When I first joined the bank, the thing that impressed me the most was the amount of daylight that actually came in the building. And it didn't matter how cloudy the day was, it was bright and it was alive. Greenery surrounds us everywhere in the bank. Uh, there are plants in our offices, in our hallways, in many meeting spaces, and that really adds a lot to the, the ambiance. What is not to like? I have a great view, so I have an 180 degree view here. I can see the river, I can see Spark Street, I have the garden court, so it's an amazing view and I'm seeing through all the buildings uh, and seeing my colleagues if they're working on the other side. 
with four walkways linking the towers and the glass curtain wall filling the space with light. The Bank of Canada is designed to be moved through. Overall, the complex fits in beautifully with the stone, Gothic-style government buildings across the street. Their reflections also mirror dramatically in the glass curtain wall. It's uh, nice that they've incorporated structures from two different eras into yeah. one building. I like the fact that they preserve the old stone structure that dates back to at least the 1930s and surrounded it with two more modern glass towers. Uh, Arthur Erickson is one of Canada's great architects and he's uh, left his legacy across various cities in Canada and it's nice to think that in Ottawa, um, an institution which is as important to Canada as the Bank of Canada, uh, has accompanying it uh, really a great um, physical location that uh, makes, makes a very uh, serious point, I think, to uh, to support the bank's broader ob objectives. You know, you're, you're not an architect because you're a technician or because you're just a builder. You're one because you understand the time you're in, you understand, um, you're thoughtful about how what you build relates to people, how they move, how they, the air that they have around them, the light, the details, the quality of the materials. I mean, all of these things. And that's hugely important.